To give you guys some backstory, Wendy Williams was born in July 1964. She was raised in New Jersey. She's always been a Jersey girl, and from the beginning, she's always said she's spoken too loud and too fast. Wendy was outgoing from a young age. I mean, her sister Wanda was very book smart, very uh, straight A student, so they weren't alike. Wendy was kind of the oddball of the family. Whenever Wendy went off to college, she got involved in radio. She hosted her own they write urban music show on the college's radio station. She modeled her style after Howard Stern, even dubbing herself the queen of all media in homage to Stern's title, the king of all media. Howard Stern was a big deal in radio. That's something that Wendy really appreciated because he built a whole empire around just his voice and his thoughts and this conversation. Yeah, she made her mark making celebrities extremely uncomfortable on her popular New York radio show. She's got a TV show on VH1 and a new book right here called Wendy's Got the Heat. That's number nine on the New York Times bestseller list. Please welcome troublemaker Wendy Williams. <laughs> Now, Wendy did not get to where she has been easily. She's had to pick some fights to make a name for herself. This article writes, considering Wendy has made a career out of having a lot of opinions about Hollywood stars, she's also found herself in a feud or two. She's no stranger to a good back and forth, and that's why I wanted to start with Whitney Houston. Now, back in the day, Wendy did not let Whitney live in peace. She constantly reported on stories of, you know, Whitney Houston using drugs, her erratic behavior, her marriage to Bobby Brown and how bad it was. Now, Wendy was constantly talking about Whitney and begging her to come onto the show. And eventually, you know, Whitney Houston decided to call in. This was back in 2003. And right from the start, their conversation was tense and Wendy was not backing down. Whitney confronted Wendy about constantly constantly speaking about her personal life and scolded her for doing so. In my opinion, it seems like Wendy was way too ready for this interview. She had all of her punches ready to go and it got really awkward. Here's a clip of their conversation. Do you regret Diane Sawyer interview? No, why should I? Well, it didn't exactly show you in the best light. You don't think so? Well, you know, Wendy, you don't show yourself in the best light. People still listen to you. Whitney went after Wendy right away, and as she should, because at this point in time, it really was the world against Whitney Houston, and she was mentally ill and struggling with drug addiction. So Whitney, as, as far as you stand with drug use, is there drug use going on at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I'm a mother. Only my mother has privy to that information. You talk to your child about that. Don't yeah. ask me no questions like I'm a child. You talk to your baby about her, what, what she gonna be uh, confronting what she gotta deal with. And, uh, and, and, Don't ask me like I'm a child, because I'm not a child, Wendy. My child is a little boy, and I will talk to him yeah, at drugs. Don't talk to him about that shit. Don't talk to me about that shit. But listen, Whitney, what, I, I, I will talk to my son about drugs, because I have Don't been me, where Wendy. the Don't world speculates day. where you Don't are, me, which is, uh, I was a full-blown cocaine addict, so well, I, I... problem, not mine. Move on. Well, you know, that was my problem, Whitney. Uh, you yourself. Did you ask God to help you? And, no, I, ma I managed, thank God, because I have a good man. And and, so, and so thank God I was able to just rise up thank above God, it Wendy. and quit. And all I ask is, okay. okay. I have to say, Wendy is pretty good at kind of coming for Whitney, but not being as aggressive or like outright aggressive, very passive aggressive. I mean, the fact that she said, like, I have a good man. Well, that's a little bit, you know, foreshadowing. We saw uh, what happened to Wendy's relationship with her good man. He wasn't really a good man when he had a whole other family, a new kid. Uh, a brand new house that Wendy had paid for for the mistress. So, yeah, not that great of a guy. So don't throw the, you know, the stones at the glass houses, right? Is that the saying? So recently I was hearing that you were trying to trim the budget, which, by the way, Whitney, I thought that this was something... Where the hell are you getting information from? Who's calling you and telling you? Um, uh, well, I got this story from a gossip named Steve Hers. You ever hear of him? No. Well, like you said, gossip. Yeah. Steve yeah. Hers is a West Coast correspondent, and um, we we uh, I communicate with all the different gossips. Uh, it's it's what we do, you know. Uh, you guys are all going to have a gossip lunch, huh? Something like something like that. <laughs> Eddie. 
I like how these stories used to spread back in the day, like with, you know, these people having phone conversations and sending emails to each other. Opposed to social media, information could be spread so quickly. It could disappear so quickly. Back then, it really was like sourcing. And you could hear in like Winnie's reaction that she's kind of like, wait, what? Who told you that? Like, how did you get this information? Hit me, please. Listen, they were saying that you were, uh, you cut your mother's, um, you don't know what the f Allowance. You don't make me curse on the video. I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, come on. Well, Steve was saying it was from about like $1,600 a week to about $500 a week. I'm happy to kiss my Okay. And then that never happened. I don't even know what the you're talking about. Well. I have no idea what the you're talking about, Wendy. Now, if Wendy is just like spreading BS, I can understand why Whitney would be mad because I would be like, okay, we're on live radio. Like people are listening to this. You're saying these things and you got me here, which is making it more like, I guess, legit. So if someone else is going to report on it, they're going to be like, oh, in this interview with like Whitney Houston, opposed to just Wendy like talking about what she's heard on the street, she's actually confronting her, which kind of implicates Whitney. And Whitney also seems very caught off guard. When your husband was um, incarcerated for those few days, what types of things do you tell her concerning, like, do you say, like, daddy's away visiting Boston? Or? I don't really talk to her. She's a dead patient. She's a child who has intelligence. Okay. My child is smart. No, what I'm I talk to her, shut your mouth. I talk to her like she's an intelligent human being, okay? And I give her just as much as she can handle for a nine-year-old because I'm her mother, okay? And that's how we deal with it. Never mind what I told her, but she know the deal. Jeez. Oh my gosh. Um, it got so heated. Also, I just remembered how her daughter died, like died as well, right? Like of an overdose as well, I believe. So unfortunate. So sad that what happened to Whitney Houston and her family. And yeah, I wonder how Wendy feels like nowadays. I mean, we don't even know like what's going on with Wendy. I mean, she hasn't been spotted in over 200 days.